In this video, we're going to go over everything related to assessments and specifically grading in Canvas. Hey guys, it's Lauren. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited today to teach you all the things related to grading in Canvas. I think the best part, honestly, of this video is we're going to get to take a look at what new rubrics looks like. In case you're not aware, rubrics is getting a redesign, an upgrade, and there's so many more customizations and things that you can do, including making copies, which is something you couldn't do before. So that's really exciting. All right, guys, let's get into the nitty gritty of this video and continue continue on with the everything you need to know about Canvas series. our home page is done and then on the modules page we have all of our templates and I started module one down here so the content is built now what's super important is setting up our canvas course so that we have kind of our grading system and assessments ready to go so the first thing that I'm going to show you is how to create different assignment groups and add weights to those based upon whatever your school district's policy is. So we are gonna go over to assignments and you'll see that we have a formative section, which I already started, and a summative. And this formative section is just all of the template assignments that we've made so far. So I have already started grouping. Automatically, when you create an assignment, Canvas is going to create an assignment groups as like a default. In order to create groups, you can either click the plus button and start creating a separate group. So I'll just do this one, no grade group, and then I'll click save. And so now I have another group at the bottom here. And then we can also create assignments directly in here. But the thing that we're going to focus on is actually in the three dots here, which is the assignment group weights. So when you click on it, it will ask you to check off this box and it'll show you every single group category you've created. So how we add the group weights is simply we're just going to click within the box and I am going to start assigning a percentage for each group. I'm going to leave assignments and no grade at zero. And so we have different formative and summative at the percentages that my previous school district had, and then we'll click save. And so now when your students actually have their grade book, so they'll go over to grades and they'll view things, the assignment or quiz will be weighted based upon this group right here. So it's a, this is 80% of their grade and then their test is 20% of their grade. That is just a really awesome thing that you can do within and creating assignments. So again, like when you do create an assignment, you can come to that assignment group and either choose formative or summative, and then it's already going to weigh out that assignment for you automatically, which is really cool. Now that we have our weighted groups, we are going to create some rubrics. So we're gonna go back over to the course navigation bar, and we're going to select rubrics. From here, we'll just click add a rubric, and then we'll get started. So we'll give it a rubric name. I'm gonna do discuss rubric is going to be my title and now we get to add some criteria this is the basic outline of it we have your criteria the description the rating so this is essentially the score you're going to provide and then the point value okay so we can just start clicking on the first criteria for this rubric and we're going to make this for a discussion board so I just wrote responded to the prompt and then from here they either get five points for full marks or then it's going to add add a additional rating. So we'll do partial and no marks. So we're just going to leave it at that, but you can get very detailed in your rating titles and descriptions. So maybe, you know, right here, I write about how they responded to all the questions or they responded to the prompt completely. And then I'm going to just click update and add a new criterion. So if this one is going to be about not just responding to the prompt, but we're going to do replied to student number one. Okay, so they have to respond to a student. So they're going to get five marks for that. And then again, we'll do partial marks if they did it partially. And so that's our score so far. I'm going to change this. So the 
prompt has more responses and I'll delete that and then we'll get the 5-4 partial marks just editing so I can edit this whenever I want. Then I'm going to add because they have to respond to two students so I'm going to click this and instead of rewriting everything I am actually going to duplicate responded to student number one student number two. And now my rubric is done and I'm going to click create rubric and we're all good. So I can delete it. I can then edit it at any time. Now what I'm going to show you real quick is how you can add this to the discussion board. So we'll go to home real or we'll go to modules real quick and we'll go to our first discussion template and we are going to click the three dots and we're going to do add a rubric and from there we'll click find a rubric. So one thing to pay attention to is you can actually grab rubrics from other courses. Oh, since we're in the sandbox course, we are going to grab this discussion rubric that we just made and we will click use rubric. And the last thing I am going to do is click that edit pencil. And then from here, I can select use this rubric for assignment grading. If I don't select this box, then it's just kind of a useless attached rubric that won't award any points. So make sure you select that whenever you add a rubric to an assignment or a discussion. Okay, so now I'm going to select update rubric. We are going to change the score of this um, and then update and now we're done. So this discussion is now worth a total of 20 points and I can reuse this rubric over and over again for other discussions as well. I am now in my full Canvas instance account and I want to show you real quick what is coming to Rubrics. So they are essentially updating Rubrics with a redesign and so it's going to look a little bit different which is nice. This is the new landing page you'll get with the new Rubrics and it's kind of the same process of adding a Rubric. We're going to give it a name so we'll just do discussion board again. So what is really nice about this, maybe the pros and cons of this new interface is the first thing is you can get a lot more detail. So we're going to create a new criterion right here. And so again, we will just do responded to the prompt and then you can do your description. I'm just going to leave it blank for now. Here is where we get more details. So it's already going to do exceeds mastery near below no evidence. So I can adjust the point values up and down here. What's really nice too is I can also add a new rating and then I can delete it if I'm not going to use it. So we are going to do for that one again, it was 10 points. So we'll leave it like this and I'll click save. So this criteria is saved, which is great. I can edit it at any time. I can trash it or I can make a copy of it. What's really nice is we're still in edit mode. So I can add a new criteria and then we will do reply to student number one and this will be worth five points and we'll click save and then we're just gonna duplicate this same one and change the name uh, for student number two. Now we have our total of uh, possible points. We can actually like move these around at any point which is really nice but I'm gonna keep it like that. Also just another little note you can create from outcomes. I'm not gonna do that because as you can see I have no outcomes. <laughs> another really cool thing about new rubrics is the preview the rubric. So this is what it's going to look like when I attach it to the discussion board assignment. So there's the traditional view, a horizontal view now, which is really cool. So you have like these little, little buttons and it makes it smaller. And then you also have a vertical view. So you have options on how you want to view your rubric in the speed grader, which is so cool. Uh, so I am just going to exit out this. We'll save the rubric and now you can kind of see again we're at that landing page and it gives you more information than the traditional rubrics did so we have total points criterion where is it being used which is nice and then you just have these actions where you can actually duplicate it you can't do that with the old one and then you can archive it which there's a whole tab here for that and then you can delete it entirely so just wanted to show you guys what is coming with rubrics your school can enable this right now. Some of them might already have, which is awesome, but it is coming and it's, it's so exciting.
I am now going to show you guys, so this has 20 possible points, it's using the rubric, and we're going to grade this. So in um, discussions to find the speed grader, you're going to click on the three dots and then open in speed grader. So I can see here that my student has responded to the prompt, they did respond to a student, and they also responded to a second student. So now I'm going to click save, and there you go, the grading is super simple. You have your response is on the left, you have your grading, your rubrics, assessment section on the right. You can also add a comment um, and they also have these little emojis which you can add. And then the new feature as well, all the new features today, a screen record studio capture. All right, this is going to be fun. So you have to enable the screen capture. And I think what is so amazing about this is that this is in the free for teachers version as well. It's not just in the full canvas version. We're using whatever microphone, so I have my Yeti here, and then your camera you get to choose. So very similar to like Zoom. And then we can start recording and let's see what happens. Okay, so now I am, I have a screen recorder and we can just go over like, hey, this was a really great response. And I think this is the area where you need to work a little bit more, so on and so on. Finish recording and then save the media. And this, I just, this is so cool, you guys. Then it attaches to the assignment so students now can watch it. And now you don't have to like type out this super long comment. So cool. You can do that now. Up at the top here, just a little kind of basic tour. You have access to the grade book, which we're going to access next. You can actually hide the grades from your students if you want to. And then you have some keyboard shortcuts. So this tells you how to like quickly get through the speed grader um, if you want to use those. And then you have options on how you want to sort your students by name, by the date they submitted the assignment, by submission status, so it doesn't need to be graded, not submitted, etc. Random or random students with submission status. And then you do have the option to hide student names as well if you are interested in that. So then you would click save those settings. You can quickly access the assignment by just clicking on the title. It tells you how many you have to grade versus how many you have graded. It tells you the average percentage. And then this right here is where you'd have a list of students and then you could click next to the next student. But I only have one, so it's not really gonna work this time. <laughs> the last thing we are going to review is the grade book. So we're now in the Canvas gradebook. And the first thing that I am going to show you guys is within settings, we have some viewing options to show. So we have the options to show notes, unpublished assignments. So I actually uncheck this box. And then we have the option as well to hide assignment group totals, to hide total and override columns. That's completely up to you. And then view ungraded as zeros. So that is another feature that you can add if if you want. For now though, I am actually just going to uncheck all of these. I like to have the least amount of things as possible on my grade book. And then for arrange by, instead of a default order, I actually like to do uh, due dates. So we'll do due date. I'm going to do oldest to newest. That's just how I like to do it. You can change it however you want, but this is the way that I like to do it. And then we'll click apply. And now you'll see I don't have any unpublished assignments anymore which is great. So then the other thing that I like to add is within filters. So we have modules here and you can actually only look at certain things like we can see module one. So now it is so much smaller. Uh, you can do status. We can look at only the resubmitted, missing, late, dropped, excused, all of those marks. Let's just uncheck that one for now. Assignment group. So maybe I only want to look at my formatives. Maybe I only want to look at my summary. So this is really great because it shrinks down your gradebook and you can also like search by name, type in the student name and only their grades will appear, which is awesome. The last thing that I'll show you is what the student grades looks like. So if you click on the student name and then you click the grades, it will take you to their gradebook. So you can see here every assignment and then underneath them, it has what group they're in. So students can actually identify and go, oh, I actually 
truly know that, you know, this summative is worth more. I need to focus on that right now. What's really cool too is then students can actually like see their results. So they have their rubric right here and then they can also see the feedback, which there is the screen, the okay. screen recording right there, which is really, really cool. Another thing to consider with grading is whether or not you have a sys ID that is syncing to an external like portal for grades. Um, if so, you need to be careful that some of these settings may not necessarily transfer appropriately. Like for example, some of these marks may not show up within your syncing portal. So those are just some really important things to consider. But overall, I just wanted to review all of the things that you can do in terms of grades. So I really hope that this was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful and I hope that you were excited to see the new redesign of rubrics. If you have any questions, anything Canvas related, feel free to leave a comment below. In the next video, we're gonna review how you can share your content and also if you use the Free for Teachers version as your sandbox course, how to get that into your district specific Canvas instance. So definitely stay tuned for that one. All right guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye.